Hello everybody and welcome back. This is Fred HK for Guided Hacking and today we're going to be taking a look at Lime Crypto. Lime Crypto is a crypto that was developed by 9xCat who is a prominent malware developer who creates malware under the guise of educational purposes but in reality you'll find their malware being used within the wild against real victims. Today we're going to be taking a look at this open source crypto to understand the theory behind how cryptos are used to hide malware from antiviruses and how this specific crypto functions. Let's get into it. Here we have Lime Crypto open. We can see that you can select a file within it or you can create a command line process. It'll then offer options for installation within a given folder. You can specify a file name or a secondary folder and a registry name. Then it offers injection options that you can determine how it will inject itself into a given process or what technique it'll use. We can see that it has the options of reg asm reg services and itself then we can also set the information about a given assembly such as the title description and so on of a assembly and we can also click random to randomize this it has a preset list that copies from a lot of popular binaries we can also clone from a given binary and we would just need to select it within this window you can also set the icon of a binary. And then once all of these options are set, you can encrypt your binary here. This tool is available on GitHub. The tool is written within .NET. So I'm going to open the pre-built binary from the GitHub and put it into DNSpy. Let's look at how Lime Crypto works. You can see some of the modules and then more information and classes that are used within the binary. We can first check out the program itself. And because this is a form using .NET, we can see that the program main is just going to be calling a new instance of the form class. And we can click into this to see the real code. So we can see the initialization is just setting all of the default options for it. It is then just setting some things within the GUI, so on and so forth. Um, what we really want to be looking at is what happens when the build button is clicked. When it's clicked, this is what will initialize the crypto and it will start building as we can see here. We can click into start building to check out some more of the code. And this is just changing some things within the GUI. If we scroll through this, a lot of it is GUI management. So we're going to look at the imports used within the code to find out where the real program is lying. And then within build, we can see the code that we're actually looking for. Here we have a very basic overview of a scam time crypto and a runtime crypto. Let's concentrate first on the scan time crypto. A scan time crypto is for static analysis of a binary. What static analysis is, is when a malware is not actually detonated, but you're just looking at it from a code perspective. So you haven't detonated it within a VM or a sandbox. Antiviruses will do this first. They'll check out a binary without running it or checking what's going on on the system to see if they can determine whether it is malicious or not. And to bypass this, a scan time crypto will usually work in the following order. You'll take your malware and you'll put it into your crypto. Then your crypto will spit out a decryptor and the obfuscated malware. So what the crypto will do is it will encrypt usually or obfuscate the malware that you've put in and then bundle it with a decryptor. Looking at runtime cryptors, we see the same where you'll put your malware into a cryptor, but instead of using a decryptor, it will be all bundled into a stub. And what a stub is, is it's just code that will bundle the decryptor and obfuscated malware into one and then do everything within memory so that it will create a new process once the malware has been decrypted or deobfuscated so that nothing ever touches the disk. And this is very useful so that the decrypted or deobfuscated malware never touches the disk so that an antivirus may have a harder time scanning it. This doesn't always work and this is somewhat of an older technique, but nowadays antiviruses have many different methods of detecting malware. For a basic introduction to how these concepts work, let's stick with the idea of this runtime crypto, which is what Lime Crypto is. It will be a piece of code that will contain both the decryptor and the obfuscated malware. And once ran, it will run the malware within memory. So let's go back to looking at what Lime Crypto is doing. Let's look at the functions within the limecrypto.build class. Within it, 
we see the setup build here, and this is an empty initialization of the class. And then we see AES encrypt, compile and prepare source. So we can already get an idea of where the previously mentioned obfuscation of the malware is going to come in. And we can guess already initially, this is just a guess and not your final answer because I recommend that you read through the entire source. But for now, let's think that maybe AES encrypt is being used to obfuscate that sample as we saw within this theory demonstration. Looking at the compile function, we're going to see if we can confirm that theory. So looking through it, we see that it's creating a temporary directory. It's then initializing some new strings, setting some more options here. We can see some more what look like command line options or command line flags. We can see that it's a target library. The platform is built for x86 and it's got some optimizations enabled. Then it's going to be creating a path and creating some more options that it'll use later on. It's also going to look within the resources of the binary that I'm currently looking at, which is Lime Crypto itself, and it's going to be touching those. We can see that it's just checking if what it's done has created some errors and cleaning up a little bit. The main functionality here is when it's calling the following. The AES encrypt function after it reads all of the bytes of the given file. It's also taking the assembly icon that would have been specified within the GUI and some other information that is specified within the GUI. And we can see that within the prepare source function here. We can right click on this and we can click on analyze to see where it's used. And we can see that it's used within the call, the button build. And this is when a user would click on build. So we can see first it calls prepare source and then it starts building. So prepare source is called before the compile function that we looked at earlier. Within prepare source, we see that it's taking some of the assembly details and setting them. And then this is all being replaced within the stub and the loader. It's sending some more information. And then there's also an AES encryption routine here. So let's look at the resources which were referred to earlier to see what is within them. And within the resources themselves, we see the loader and the stub. Let's go and check out the code of both of these. First, let's look at the loader. Within the loader, we see that the main function will just call a run of a new class called Nian. And then within this class, it'll call initialize it'll sleep and then as expected, it will decrypt the resources of stub. And once that's done, it'll run it. Besides that, that's all the loader does. So to summarize, it will first load hashtag stub from resources, AES decrypt stub, and then create an instance of stub and run it. The loader is a very simple function with only three individual tasks that it accomplishes. So let's go ahead and look at stub. Looking at stub, the story is a bit different. This file already looks a lot bigger than the other. So this is probably where a lot of the processes to avoid antiviruses begins. It first checks if the install flag is enabled and if so, it will run the installer function. This is a function that will install itself into a temporary directory on the file system and then create a registry key so that when the computer is turned on, it will run the file within the temporary directory so that if somebody's malware needs to be detonated every time the victim's computer is turned on, this is how you would do it. Then it will go on to initialize a run PE class and decrypt from resources the payload. So the payload is the malware that a threat actor will give the crypto, and this will be the malware that they want to obfuscate and encrypt. And like we assumed earlier, this payload will be AES encrypted, put into the resources of the stub, and then upon runtime will be decrypted. The method that Lime Crypto is using to bypass antiviruses is run PE. Run PE is a very common method of bypassing antiviruses. To understand how run PE works, let's take a little bit of a blog post about run PE. Within a blog post on AdLive software, we get a quick introduction as to how run PE will work. And I'll read this out to you quickly. When a malware starts, it'll pick a victim among the Windows processes like explorer.exe and start a new instance of it in a suspended state. In that state, it's safe to modify the malware, will totally clear it from its code. So 
what it's saying here is that it will remove the original code from the suspended state of the process and then it will extend the memory if needed and copy its own code inside so basically what it's doing is it's replacing the code within a given process and copying the malicious code within that process in the case of the malicious code this is what the threat actor would be giving the crypto as their malware then the malware will do some magic in this case the malware being the stub will do some magic to adjust the address of the entry point as well as the base address and will resume the process after being resumed the process shows being started from a file explorer.exe that has nothing to do anymore with what it actually does this way you can inject your malware into a legitimate process that an antivirus and windows will trust such as explorer.exe which is a very common process in all windows installations thus by first encrypting your malware to avoid static detection during runtime detection, you can bypass the antivirus by putting it into a legitimate process. And we can see that this is exactly what Ninecat has written into LimeCrypto. And we can see the RunPE class here. But we can see calls to create process and then reading the process memory, then calling virtual alloc, which will allocate memory, and it will then call write process memory just as we saw within the theoretical understanding of how RunPE works. It will get the bytes of the malware and these will be written into the process. We can see above all of the imports it does with the DLLs that are needed to call these Windows functions, such as create process and get thread context and so on and so forth. If we look at all of these in sequential order, we can see a good practical illustration of the theory that we read through, such as creating the process, getting the thread where it will be suspended. This set thread context will suspend the thread. It will then read the process memory and then overwrite the process memory. And then once all of this is done, it'll resume thread. When calling resume thread, this will be resuming into the threat actors malware. To finish, we can see within the compile function where within the GUI of Lime Crypto, you'd select your injection. According to which option you choose, it will change the stub.cs file with the correct injection process. So if you select itself here, it will get the executable path of the currently running binary, which will be the stub. Then if not, the stub will call this C sharp code to get the directory to framework 64 framework and then the injection name being either reg services or reg asm once all of this is done this will have modified the c sharp code within the resources both loader and stub and it will then compile them into a working executable which can be spread onto victims machines i hope that this was a good introduction as to how cryptos work and that you took something away from this video Thank you so much for watching and until the next one, goodbye.